My name is Megan Quentin Baxter. I'm the director of the Medev Subject Centre, um, funded by the Higher Education Academy, based here at Newcastle University. Um, so the projects we've uh, worked on in the past have included um, organising open educational resources, and um, Porsche and Actor. And we've currently got a project under the phase three of the program named. Um, uh, publish OER, which is working with publishers, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Organising open education resources was a large project involving uh, 18 partners in total, uh, but that was with all well with 50% of the medical, dental, and veterinary schools in the UK, and and that was a really good opportunity to raise awareness of the possibility of sharing and also get us in the open what the challenges are, um, and almost invariably they came back to IPR, and I think they still do, and and I guess that's one of the reasons why you're talking to me. Um, Porsche was working with the NHS uh, and the um, NHS the learning repository looking at how we can make best use of simultaneous repositories operating here in the UK and ensuring that students who are in the healthcare services have access to academic resources and also that academic students can if possible have access to uh, resources which are typically only available under NHS logins and so forth. Um, uh, ACTA was an OMAC project so that was working with staff developers and I have to say for the, the bang for buck um, the OMAC projects have been absolutely brilliant. We had five partners and I'm really grateful to um, Cambridge, Bristol, uh, Hull, York, uh, Newcastle and um, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine who were, who were involved in that uh, and, and also Plymouth University. They were um, stars involved in helping new staff who have many, many challenges but who are trying to learn the business of teaching um, and, and to get through to them and be able to share resources with them I think is really important. Um, Publish OER is a is a new beast and is I think very challenging um, because the situation is changing so fast and publishers are desperate not to be left behind and many of them feel that they are absolutely on the edge of being cut out of academic publishing and they're looking for new roles and those roles some of them are very threatening to higher education um, so we're looking at that with a, a very close eye and, and seeing how we can primarily look at mutually beneficial models for embedding published works in open education resources. So therefore, you know, stuff that people download off um, you know, legitimate access sites like Grey's Anatomy, um, Kumar and Clark, electronic tags, they can log in, they can download images, embed them in teaching. Those teaching materials are then either recorded in uh, a video stream by the university or they're uploaded to a, a, a PowerPoint, as a PowerPoint file uploaded to a VLE. And then the result of that, of course, could just go viral because they can get um, digitally copied by students and, and therefore they're out there. And that is an inclusive mixture of copyright of many, many different sources. And it's a real challenge for people because it's the, it's the confidence with which we do it. And if we're all sneaking around pretending that we're walking on eggshells, then we're not going to get very far. So we're looking to publish OER to try and promote some more confidence in the sector and, and look at maybe national licenses. It's quite ambitious. Particularly with Publish OER, the main issues, I think, are the complexities with which published works are made available. If you look at broadcast licences, if you look at, um, I mean, a different te a textbook from a different publisher, um, they will vary in terms of how they're licensed, but even textbooks from, from the same publishers can vary with how they're licensed. Publishers don't always have cleared copyright permissions for images and um, other materials that are embedded in their works. Um, so all of us are kind of looking over our shoulders and seeing where the next litigation um, is likely to come from, and I think that is part of the confidence issue. I think we need to move into a risk management situation where we say these risks are reasonable for the outputs and those risks are not. Um, but we also need to make it simple for people to be able to know exactly what the rules are and then to follow them. And I, you know, I've, I suppose I've done enough now to realise that we're never going to have a, a very simple situation where you can say to an academic, do this, don't do that, and it will all be all right. Um, it's always going to require some interpretation and 
Um, but the more tools that we can give academic staff and um, teaching staff and students to, to, to help them to learn and to help them to observe uh, how um, materials can be used and reused and remixed, I think the better, uh, and then they can make informed choices. But it's, it's not going to stop pir piracy and plagiarism. <laughs>
I think the challenging part about the tools is if you don't know the language, it's very hard to get into them to start with. But I don't know how the um, Disc Legal, Web to Rights, or other teams could actually improve that because it's just a hurdle that I think some people have to get over in order to raise awareness. Thank you.